Hey, it's Rob with Sideways Specialties again, and we are back. We are messing with the carb still. What I've done since the last video is pretty much putting this together. I tested it for continuity across the back plate to this outside ring, which is typically grounded. And I got that resistor under that little nut. It's just kind of spaced out to keep it from catching on there. Now, what I'm doing is I'm essentially going to take this I'm going to re-rivet it back together after I get this thing epoxied on here. It's just JB Weld. It's not JB Quick or anything else. And it's good up to like 800 degrees, so I'm not really worried about it coming apart. But I assume what they're using this for is pretty much on the same premise that if you heat up a resistor or short a resistor to a high load, what will end up happening is the resistor gets hot. It ejects the heat and all the electrical energy that cannot be expended through the other end of the circuit is expended through heat loss. So, after I tested across that piece of whatever that is in the middle, resistive disc, like you saw before, one mega ohm, I'm still getting one meg on the outside of here. I did take both pads and stone them. Heh, <laughs> not 420, actual stone and got all the goop off of them, got them all cleaned up, and then decided to JB weld this on there. There's no JB weld underneath. So where you see it right there, that JB weld on the peripheral, around the perimeter there, that's the only place it's got JB weld. I put the nut on, put that piece in the center, and then clamped it, then I applied the JB weld all the way around it with a piece of stainless steel TIG filler. So hopefully, tomorrow this thing will be all set up and we can give it a go. Hopefully it's not too tight. I did test to make sure this thing is still active, and it is. It's actually pretty interesting how these things work, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you right now. Yeah definitely conductive so given that is the premise that this thing moves with a temperature change I'm just going to sit here and make the educated guess that this needs heat from back here when that shorts out which we are going to test I have an 11 or a 3s which is an 11.1 .1 volt uh, lipo battery just an RC card grade one well well 800 milliamp hour I think it is but I think when I short from here with the negative and I put positive into that center where we saw all that little copper honeycomb under that nut, I think this thing is going to heat up and that's going to start to move. And the way we're going to test that is we're actually going to put it in the card. We want to actually be able to see this thing change the throttle position. So when I go in there to do it, I want to see this flap right here. I want to see how long it takes for this thing to go from closed to open. I want to see this thing actuate. Once that's it, we're done. And we can see the second running of the boat. Alright, so here we are. Got this thing all nice and woo. All nice and epoxied in. Well, JB Weld, but you get the point. We're going to make sure it works. Punch the holes out just a little bit. I'm gonna run an 832nd screw in there, or 832 screw in there. And I want to bolt it in through the back. This is where the excess will go with the nut. The other side will be tapered head machine screws. So pretty much these over here. So I think it'll work. Here we are. Got it all built up. It does clear. And it's hooked in. Now the real question is, will it work? So what you want to do when you put these things in, is you want that little hook to grab on to this. Well right now it's like 40 degrees outside, you want this to stay closed at the top. You don't want it open. So you put it in, you turn it. Now 
now it's closed. First of all, we gotta get this screw out. Probably be easier if I didn't have a camera in my hands. Also want to make sure your little tabs up at the top are aligned. You don't want them, you know, sitting way over here or something ridiculous. That way, this stays nice and centered, and it should seat. Yeah, see. Once it seats in there, everything's nice and tight. And the way we'll know that this thing works is when we hook it up it'll get warm. Now it'll, it'll either screw up and it'll mess up the JB weld or it won't have connectivity and we'll be screwed either way. I'm betting that it won't screw up. Or at least I hope it doesn't. And we'll be good. You're not technically supposed to be able to rebuild these things. It's not a, it's not a serviceable part. And that's because you have to do the epoxy on it, or something of another, to make it work. So now that it's on there, we're going to take this, we're going to hook it up to the battery. We're going to hook up the ground here, we're going to hook up the positive here. And we're going to see if it kicks it over. I'll get it set up, and we'll be right back. Alright, so we got it hooked to the battery. Now we're going to hook it up, we're going to see what we can get. So now that that's connected, we should start getting movement within two minutes. So what that heat's going to do is it's going to start to generate a high current through here. And it's going to start to pull that coil back. Or not pull it, essentially. It's going to expand the size of it. Just like my thermal expansion video. It'll get hot, and it'll get bigger, and that coil will eventually start to get longer and longer and longer, allowing that flap to open. If, if we did everything right. There's no telling if it is. We'll hook it right there. That'll give me more solid ground. There we go. Now we're connected for sure. Hopefully this thing opens up. Oh man, the suspense, I tell you. This is the last part I had to do. I do have to get a little fitting right here. I believe it's just a vacuum line maybe? What it's considered for this thing, but it goes back to the fuel pump. I think it's just vacuum. Oh, oh, what is this? There's no smoke yet, so that's a good thing. It's getting hot though, it is getting warm. Oh, I thought I had it in here. Thought I had my thermal cam. Look at that though. It's working. Definitely smells weird. That might be the JB Weld though. Alright, cool. So the choke is working. We are all set. Now on its own, what it should do, since I disconnected the power, is it should close itself over time. So as I'm sitting here tearing this uh, fuel line off, this piece of shit, 
I say, yeah, that's junk. I'm gonna get new ones. And I'm also gonna get the line that goes from the pump to the tank. Well, I pull this thing off. I don't know if I can get the camera in there close enough, but look at the outlet. It's completely pinched shut. A junk. It's all garbage. So I'm gonna pull the pump off, which <laughs> I didn't even put a wrench on it yet. And I can already twist the screws by hand. So we're gonna pull that off and we're gonna see if we can do some work on that too. And the starter is the only other thing after that that I know of that needs to come off and it needs to get fixed up. Doesn't like to engage. Other than that, we did do plugs, wires, coil cap, rotor, points, and condenser. So I'm gonna move along with that. Let's get that pump off. Make sure when you pull that off, see that line that goes up? You gotta take that little tab off of that bolt. Otherwise you end up breaking things. Oh, that looks like shit. Yeah, she's gonna be a fighter. Wish I had something sharp up here to break that freaking zip tie. I need something sharp, we just need something better than the zip tie. If the zip tie is anything like the rest of the parts on this boat, it'll be a piece of shit and it'll, well, it'll break. <laughs> so, now that we got that off of there, let's pull these bolts out. Put them back where we found them so we don't have any issues. And you know, today we might just convert this to a 5 PSI electric system. I don't think that I really feel that I need to have an electric fuel pump or a, a mechanical fuel pump. These things, yeah, they last a long time, but I, I kind of like the modular idea. Everything kind of just comes apart. It's easy. It's simple. And yeah, I don't know. It just appeals to me. Some people have their preference. Some people are going to tell me I'm an idiot. You know what? I'm still going to buy whatever the fuck I want because. Not your boat. If you buy me a new fuel pump, then, well, fuck, yeah. Yeah, we'll do it your way. By all means. Oh, this is going to be a bitch. Take this. i move this one over here. This hard line. Probably going to convert it to a soft line. I mean, the old owner would not ever do this stuff, but, you know, at the same time, I'll do this all through the winter. I mean, we're getting... It's getting cold, it's getting close to the freeze season, so we'll just, uh, we'll play it by ear. I'm still going to work on it through the winter. There's going to be a lot of videos to come. As I, for one, know that there's a lot of people that don't know how to do this stuff. And this is what the marina is charging you gobs of money for. This is probably, this is probably a $150 pump. And to pull it off and replace it is probably... I don't know. I'm gonna guess and say like another 300. And that's just to fix it. It's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous, really. But this is a luxury item, so I can see why they would sit there and hit you with the cost. Oh man, this thing does not want to come out. We're just going to reef on it. There we go. Gotcha. <sighs> She's out. Ugly little bastard. What the hell? Ew. It's like plastic. Somebody put... Uh, they put the gasket on, but they didn't put the uh, correct seal. They didn't take the seal cover off. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this open. Whoa, there's some gas in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out. 
take this top off. We're gonna clean, clean, clean. If we can, we're gonna find diaphragm for it. All right, so I got the pump tore apart. Well, I got the top off of it. Look at this. We. I don't think. I can't really tell if this is a maintenance-free part. If I'm supposed to do anything special with it, I'll probably get in there. I'll clean it all out. Spray some uh, degreaser. Put some new grease in it. This is the other side of this piece. Oh, those are screws. I mean, it doesn't seem too bad. It does look a little... It does have some corrosion on it, some rust. You know, that's just from... You know, nastiness. But I'm assuming... It looks like this part comes off. If I can show you with one hand. This right here. I assume... That's what this screw allows me to do, is pull that part off. I'm not entirely sure. But if I pull those those flats, I'm sure I could get underneath it. I think we're just going to convert over to electric. And we'll call it good from there. Shouldn't be too hard to actually get this thing switched over. Oh, and when you get an electric pump on something like this, to replace something like this, this part right here, you can buy a plate that's exactly the same size. That needs to go over that hole that we had on the boat. Because what will happen is, is oil will come through there and it will leak all over the damn place. So you need to make sure that you have that capped off. Other than that, it should be good. Alright, so like I said before, we're going to go with electric. So, yeah, it's stretched out right now so I don't have that memory coil from it being rolled up. This is the pump I decided to go with. I don't know if it's got a part number on the back. Yeah, it does. So that's the pump we're going with, the Holly. Seven P or four to seven PSI. And then brand new fuel lines. Got new brass fittings. I'm gonna cap off the vacuum top on this. And I think it'll be good. Got a rope. Got a couple dock tie-offs. I don't want 60 foot of rope. So we're doing this. West Marine wanted like $500 for them, so I made them for like 60 bucks. Cool. Now we just gotta get it all put on the boat. And we'll do a quick tour of what the boat looks like currently. But yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so here's a general description of where this is going to sit. This is going to come down. Right on that bolt right there. This guy. I'm going to put a tab that comes out. It's going to hold this fuel line where it's at. That's going to come down to here. I'm going to put a tab here and a tab here. to hold it in place. And then it's going to come around. Right over here where we took the old pump off. We're going to cap that. I'll put a plate. Now well to drop down at a little table right here for this to sit on. This will essentially go like right here. So it'll sit right there just like that. And this line up here, that's gonna come all the way back down around and go right into this point right here. Once all that's figured out, we'll be able to actually, you know, start mounting stuff. And I think it'll be good. I don't know yet though, because we're gonna have some pretty wily weather coming in. Fall showers, because April forgot it. So, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes.